It's just so much easier, especially with social media now today, to go on and start to have this emotional connection with someone on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever it might be. So you think you're getting your needs met, and then all of a sudden one thing leads to another, and then, you know, it just rolls and rolls and rolls. Did you push record? Thanks so much for tuning in again to Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Hey, Silka. Hi, Paige. Paige, today we want to pick up on a topic uh, that we haven't covered in a while, quite frankly, and that is uh, marriage, uh, great divorce, and uh, specifically today, what leads to it, or in, in many cases, and that's infidelity. Uh, as, as, you know, as we talked before, I, I came across an article that said that couples over 50 are much more prone to cheat than younger couples. I, I thought that was interesting. So I wanted to throw that out to you because uh, if these statistics are true, and I believe they are, lots of us maybe are in that position of either having stepped outside the marriage or thinking about it. Yeah, what I think it's pretty amazing that that the percentages are that high. I'm not surprised though by, by lots of different things. So if you think about it, we've talked about it before, by the time you reach midlife, if you're in the same relationship with someone for a while and you have not dealt with the issues that have been accumulating, um, you know, in your junkyard of issues, you know, it comes down to a couple of different things. First off, if you've never dealt with the issues or if you have a partner who doesn't want to deal with the issues, that's the first one. If one partner wants to deal with the issues and the other partner doesn't, that can be a huge thing. That's one thing. Second is, you know, there's something, you know, called emotional detachment. And that's really big because a lot of couples, when we first start out, there's that, you know, euphoric kind of emotion that we have for each other. We're emotionally connected heart to heart. And then maybe you have kids and then life gets distracted and, you know, stressors happen and we lose that heart to heart emotional connection. And it's really important that a lot of times what happens in couples is we've lost the emotional connection because love is about the emotional connection. And if you don't have an emotional connection to your significant other, you're gonna focus on the things that piss you off the most. And they can be the smallest things, or you're not doing this, or you're not doing that, because we've lost the emotional connection. So there's two, there's two different things right there. And the third one that I'll, that I'll just bring up is, you know, sometimes you just outgrow your significant other. And you get to a place of, you know, if my partner isn't growing at least a little bit or close to the pace I'm growing, it's really hard when you're in two different directions. And growing could be emotionally, spiritually, belief system, all of that. So you have a couple different things that could possibly go on. And it's what I found is couples think, oh, it's just so much easier, especially with social media now today to go on and start to have this emotional connection with someone on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or wherever it might be. So you think you're getting your needs met and then all of a sudden one thing leads to another and then, you know, it just rolls and rolls and rolls. So there's many different reasons why, you know, something can happen within the marriage. These are one of the top three that, that I have seen. And the worst thing you can do is when you step out in the marriage, you're not only hurting the other person, but you end up with a huge amount of grief and shame and guilt yourself. So it's so much better to just always say to someone, look, this is where I am. And if we don't do something or if I don't make a choice, then I don't want to do something that I'm going to regret. So I'll just pause there because I threw a lot at you there, Silva, and I'll just get your response on some of that. Well, I mean, the big thing I hear you uh, saying, and, and I, I agree, that it's not not even necessarily about sex. It's about meeting an unmet need, an unmet need that relates to emotion, or, or you know, especially, especially for women. Uh, with men, I, I think that there, or at least you hear that there's, you know, the, 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 the sex has gone out of the marriage or the woman doesn't want to have sex and they step outside for sex. But, but again, an unmet need, but I think for women especially, it's more an emotional need than sexual. Would you agree with that? Uh, not 
really, and I know I have a lot of people out there who go, that's not true. You know, we as men, we need that sexual connection. But think about it this way. Men need a sexual connection, but underneath that sexual connection, a lot of times they get confused between sex and emotion. And deep down, we are hardwired to connect emotionally with someone else. So let's just say your partner as a you know, you're a man and your partner is a female and they don't want to have sex. The emotion connected to that is, what's wrong with me, right? Like, is there a deficit in me? Am I not good enough? So there's emotions connected to absolutely everything. So I feel a lot of times people get confused with, oh, it's a sexual thing, but if you dig deep underneath the sexual component, there's an emotional need underneath all components. And that's really talked about or connected. Yeah, no, that, well, and that, thank you for clarifying that. Uh, that's, that's just that's, perspective and what I've seen, so some people might disagree with that. Well, yeah, but it, it, I think both makes sense to, to, to some extent. The other thing that you said, um, was that you bring on a lot of grief yourself that I don't think, unless you know you're a, a serial cheater and, and you know. <laughs> yeah. but, and disconnected all the time. Yeah, exactly. It, you know, I'm talking about really the this phenomena, again, with gray divorce being much higher than divorce, you know, for younger couples, et cetera, right. et cetera that people that are first experiencing this, you know, you have this wake up call that we often talk about after 50. Right. And now all of a sudden, this also comes into the picture, you know, do our, we want it, wanting needs met outside the marriage. You don't realize how much grief you bring on to yourself, how much, as you said, shame and guilt. And I think that's important to point out because again, unless you're like in that life, you don't know that. And that's something you need to understand, I think. Yeah. And what I've seen across the board many times is that when someone does step outside the marriage and there's infidelity and they try and come back to fix the marriage or find out what's going on, let's just say you're the woman and you step out and you cheat, okay? And you go back into counseling. And a lot of times what I see is whatever partner cheated, they want to just go, okay, can we finish with this now and move on and fix this? And that is not what goes on because you're denying and minimizing your partner's own grief own, oh my gosh, what's wrong with me? And you're not taking a look at, if you're the cheater, your own grief, your own guilt, your own shame, because you just want to move on and let's not go there because I don't want to sit in what I've done to you. So that's a big thing that I see across the board as well. Yeah. Well, and I think we're going to do also a whole segment on, um, you know, re reestablishing trust after, after right. this happens. Uh, I, I think it, I felt it was, you know, important, especially after reading that article, to really bring this out to 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 the forefront that this is real this is something that does happen uh and what, what's also interesting about those types of statistics is that people under report wanting to step outside or or, or thinking about this so it's probably the 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 20 percent or whatever that 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 they quote it uh it's probably much higher than that uh, so, so that is it's something normal, to, you know, to discuss because maybe we all deal with, uh, you know, that thought every now and then. Right, and it goes back to what I always say: so many people are afraid to share their deep and honest truths about what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and it has to get out there. It has to be shared with your significant other. This isn't working. You know, I'm starting to be attracted to other people now. I'm looking at other people. I don't want this to happen with us. Can we please go into counseling? Can, you know, do we want to save this marriage? Do we want to be in this marriage? Let's dig deep and figure out, you know, is it time for us to both move on? Is it time for us, us to just have one of us move on? So, you know, there's no right or wrong if your marriage ends, you know, because people are in different places at different times. But it will help a lot if you speak up and if you really share with your significant other, you know, what you're thinking, what you're feeling. And my guess is this, and my, this is my last thing that I'll say, because I know that we're running out of time, is that what I see continuously, more so with women than men, when a woman gets to a place where she is done, she has already been saying things to her significant other for a very, very long time. And for them, it's, it's felt like it's fallen on deaf ears. And when the men hear it and they say, oh, that, wait a minute, this is coming out of left field, you know, there's, there's a miscommunication of what's going on there. But this is another thing that I see continuously 
in marriages. Yeah. Well, the, and that's what I wanted to say. Is there anything else you wanted to add? And I believe yes, that yes, was it. There's so much to say on this topic, but yeah, it, it's a tough topic. Um, it, it's very, again, I, I feel it's very worthy to bring in the forefront. And uh, for those who have been affected by it, who were either the cheater or the, the one being cheated on, uh, you know, I do want to come back and discuss how do you rebuild trust in a relationship, you know, once infidelity uh, has affected it. So, uh, Paige, thank you. We will sign off now. Uh, we'll see you next time on Our Second Act with Paige and Silka. For your second act of life. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. For more love and relationship advice after 50, please visit our website, secondact.tv. And if you haven't already done so, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Button's right over here. See you next time. Bye-bye.